Hi guys, so as we start talking about exposure, it's really important that we understand the very basics first. What does exposure mean? How can we control it? That's what I want you to walk away from this lesson understanding. So let's get started. I'm gonna photograph this flower and let me just talk about exposure means how much light the image is gonna get. So an image can be overexposed. Remember when we tap our focal point, and we raise the sun, what we're doing is we're adding more light. This image would be overexposed. If we lower it, but we go too low, then we're not giving it enough light. It would be too dark. That would be underexposed. But if we tap it and the sun is in the middle, we say that that probably has the correct exposure. Your goal is to get the correct exposure by just touching and letting the light adjust. Now, when we want to control our exposure, we can use the Lightroom app, or if we're lucky enough to have a camera where we can control, then we get to start by asking these two simple questions. The first one, what is my subject doing? Meaning, what is the motion of my subject? Is it still? Is it moving? What is the subject doing? And then where am I taking this photograph? What's the light like? Am I inside? Am I outside? Is it bright and sunny? Are there any reflections anywhere? These are things that I want to think about. Now, let's simplify this before we get any more complicated. How can we control our exposure? Two words, shutter speed and aperture. Now, let's just, again, keep it simple. So it's like an eyeball. All right, blink your eye. Open and close your eye, blinking it. Blink, blink. Close it. Open it. Close it. Open it. When you blink your eye, what's happening is when you open it, you're letting light in. It's like opening a shutter so that the light comes in. And when you close it, you're closing it and deciding no more light can come in. If you are letting in light in a dark space, your pupils are going to dilate. They're going to open up because they need more light to be able to see. But in a bright space, your pupils close down because they don't need that much light to be able to see. So on a camera, if I was to open the inside of a camera, you could see because a camera is a box with a hole in it, right? And the shutter is what opens and closes to let that light through. Every time you press the button to take a photograph, you're releasing or opening that shutter to let the light through. So you can see the shutter release on a camera is just that circle button you press to take a photo. On a digital SLR, it's that button your finger presses. Um, it, it'll naturally press on there to release the shutter. I wish you all the camera in your hand so you could experience it. All right, now, how fast your shutter opens and closes can be controlled by the shutter speed dial. And we can play with this in Lightroom. So let's talk about what shutter speed is. Shutter speed is measured in fractions of a second. What does that mean? Yes, we're doing math and photography, can you imagine? So for example, if I say my shutter speed is one over 60, that means that it's 1 60th of a second. So imagine how quick that is, or actually how slow that is. Look at the example of the images and look at if that little toy car was in motion at 1 60th of a second, what would that picture look like? It would be blurry. If I wanted it to be frozen, I need to increase the shutter speed. So like 1 2 50th of a second is faster than 1 60th of a second. The higher the number, the faster the speed. You shut your sp shutter speed based on the motion of the object or the desired results that you want, because sometimes we want that blurred effect. So. Let's think of our subject doing four different things. We're just gonna keep it general and categorize them four different ways. You have still life objects or scenes, portraits, people sitting, people in action, or you have like an engine in motion, like a car driving, right? I'm gonna give you four sweet shutter speeds that I want you to memorize. And don't worry, you're gonna play with them so you can get to know them. The first one for still objects or scenes, I want you to use a shutter speed that is 1 60th of a second. For portraits, people, I want you to use 1 125th of a second. 
for people in action, 1 250th, and for engines in motion, 1 500th. Now, I, let's look at those numbers a little bit closer. Do you notice anything about these numbers? What happens as we increase it? Do you notice that those numbers, they practically double each time? Now, why is that necessary? Let me show it to you another way. You have a pulse, right? Your pulse beats and it makes your hands shake just a little bit. If you're photographing a subject that has no pulse, then you only have one bit of motion to contend with. So 1 60th will do for your shutter speed. If you go below 1 60th though, because of your pulse, that picture could be blurry. Now let's talk about living objects, something many of you guys are afraid to photograph, but I don't want you to be afraid. So with a subject, a person, a living person, you have a pulse, but then so do they. They have a pulse. So you have two, two pulses, right? You have more movement. So we're going to double our shutter speed. Now let's take it up a notch. You have a pulse and your subjects have a pulse, but this time if they're moving, their pulse is making them move faster. You have more motion, so you have to increase your shutter speed again. But now, if we're photographing a machine, an engine that's moving, that's moving super fast, we really got to increase our shutter speed if we want to capture it. So let's see what we understand about shutter speed so far.